So, in the previous tutorial, we created this NPC that talks to us, and that's all we did. But we never really fixed the original problem, which is, we have all these towns, buildings, mountains here, but how do we actually get inside these towns, or mountains, or buildings, or whatever? To do so, we're going to create a new map, and teach how to transfer the player to that new map. So before we actually do anything, we actually got to first create a new map. So to do so, go down to your game title right here, right click on it, and hit new. And this will bring up like a new menu creator thingy. So we can make the name town one, and that's it. And we'll go to okay, and the map will be created. But let's say we don't want these settings, and we want to change the map settings. All you have to do is go back to our town one, Hit space when it's highlighted, and it'll bring up the settings again. So let's make it so the tile set is outside as opposed to overworld. Our previous map had the overworld tile set, which means it had all like the small towns, the mountains, and it just basically be a map that the player used to travel long distances. On the other hand, the outside or inside tile sets will be for like general locations that are more local. So the outside would be for like a local map that you're currently inside of, like the town we're gonna be creating, and so we're gonna be using that. Let's also make it so the width is something like 30. And let's make it so the height is about 20, just to make it more space. And finally, we also want to create a display name. Now this can be a name that's going to be displayed in the top left when the player enters a map. So we'll call this Town Ruby. Oh, whoa, there we go. And so we'll hit OK, and our town will expand, get bigger, and as you can see in the left, we have a different tile set available to be used for our tiles. So I'm gonna go quickly create a map. One final thing is that if you hold control and scroll backwards, you actually zoom out for your tile creation, or you can just push these plus and minus magnifying glasses on the top right here to zoom in or zoom out. Anyway, speed up, activate. And our map is pretty much done. So now let's actually make it so the player can get to this map by going doing something in this map. So let's zoom back into this part right here. Let's go into our event creation mode and let's double click on top of the map. And now we're gonna create a new type of event. So first thing we have to do is set the priority to below characters. And this means the player has to be standing on top of the event to, before it activates. Next, let's set it so the trigger is player touch. This means the player is going to walk on top of this event. When he's done and he's standing on top of the event, then it's going to transfer him to wherever he needs to go. On the other hand, if he did action button, this would mean the player would be standing on top of it, then click enter or Z to actually make the event run. So in this example, we're actually going to be using player touch. So now we're going to go to our content. We're going to go inside, go to the second tab, go to the first one right here, which is called transfer player. Click on this. Now we're going to select where the player is going to be transferred. So click this right here, and now we're going to have a list of all of our maps, just two right now. So we're going to click on town one, we're going to click on this new entrance spot right here. Then we're going to set the direction to left, since we want the player to be looking left when the transfer is done. We'll set the fade to black, though you can also use white, or you could remove it completely, though black is a good standard way to do it. So we'll hit OK. And this event is actually done. We do not need an image because we want this to be invisible and see the player just click on it or walk on it without actually having to know that there's anything going on. So let's go ahead and hit the OK. Now let's copy the event. We'll right click, we'll hit copy. Now we can just go up to one of these other tiles and hit paste and paste it on top of all of the town. So we can also do control V to just paste it faster. And now when the player walks on top of any part of this town, it'll transfer them to the town one map. So now in the town one map, let's actually go to this tile right here. Let's double click on it. And let's also create another transfer event for moving back. So once again, we'll do the trigger, player touch. We'll go to the contents. We'll go to the second tab, transfer player, go choose a place. We'll choose map 001. We'll choose this spot right here. We'll make sure they're looking down and then we'll fade the black. We'll hit okay. We'll hit okay. We'll save and now we'll run our game to test it out. So now here we are inside of our game. We're walking around and we're gonna go into this map. So all you gotta do is walk on top of it and we go transferred into the map. So now we're in town Ruby and as you can see, we're actually inside the map we created. Now let's go back outside by just walking back to this pot right here and it transfers us back to the overworld. And that's 
all you need to do. But let's try one final thing. Now, if you're in event mode, if you right click on a tab by right clicking on it like so, we can go to quick event creation and actually create a transfer event for us. It'll ask us to select location, so we can select one of the locations, we can select a direction, so we can select a direction, and when we hit OK, it'll actually let us create our own quick event. And as you can see, it's pretty much identical to what we created. The only difference is they have this play sound effect for move one. And this makes it so that there's a sound effect that it plays when we transfer through the event. So let's actually take this and add it into our own transfer event. So let's right click on it, hit copy. And now we can actually go to this event and we can just delete it entirely. So we'll right click and hit delete. Now I'll go back to our own event. We will right click right here and we'll hit paste. And it'll paste it on top of this event right here. So now finally we can delete these other three events. So delete, delete, delete. Now we can copy and paste this new one on top of all these. And I did so just by hitting Control C, then Control V as a quick thing to do it. Now we'll have a sound effect that plays during our transfer. So that's all we can do for that situation. But say we're in our game and we want to go somewhere that we can't really walk on top of, like these mountains right here. As you can see, if we push into them, we can't really walk on top of them. So even if we did use one of those events, they'd actually not activate because we aren't walking on top of them. So all we'd really have to do is actually do something similar to what we did for these events, only we combine it with what we learned from the NPC. So if we paste one of these events here, we can go into it and go to the priority and the trigger. So let's set the priority to the same as characters, and this will make it so that if the player pushes against it, they can actually activate the event without really having to step on top of it to do the player touch trigger. Alternatively, we can set this to action button, and this would be the same as our NPC, which means we just have to be looking towards it, push the action button, and the event will activate. So if we paste this event all over our mountains right here, and realistically probably just we'll put it on one side, but if we want to make it so that mountains can be activated from all sides, we'd simply do that. Now we'll run our game again. Now when we go to our mountains, we can walk into them, and if we push the enter button, it'll transfer us to our town because we didn't really make a mountain map but you get the point and that's all for this video if you enjoyed please be sure to give this video a thumbs up please be sure to subscribe leave a comment in the way so we want to see a new beginner's tutorial until next time rpg maker tutorial out